good morning, family. How are y'all doing? I have some things on my heart today. Uh, you know, after I made that last video, you know, I, a lot of people were emailing me. And I, I mean, I got a ton of emails from everybody, seriously. And it was, uh, some of the emails were, you know, rude. Some of them were kind. But I got a really good email that was, it really blessed me. I'm going to have my wife read this uh, email to you all uh, that this person sent to me. Um, that is a prophecy that was given uh, that this person had a visitation from the Lord back in 2015 and explains everything uh, about what happened and, and why the judgment was set and why it didn't happen. You know, whenever I told you all uh, that I had this it, visit, this the, these, these warnings from the Holy Spirit in prayer, and 2013, 2014, and then and then the Lord warned me that there was going to be a major storm come, and uh, basically the beginning of uh, all heck breaking loose upon the world uh, with the Shemitah cycle. With the you know, and and then like I told you all, Rabbi, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn wrote the book the um, the Harbinger. And he came out, and there were so many prophetic voices that were saying something was going to happen, but. I was never able, really able to 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 uh, get a word from the Lord of what happened, whenever something didn't happen. You know, whenever you know everybody's talking about praying and interceding, and we turn things and stop things. And I know that, you know, I understand the power of prayer. I understand um, our authority and what God has called us to do on this earth. And so, you know, I always question. You know, when He came to me, and He said, "Brandon, things have changed." He, you know, what's the now word? And I told you all that. And when he spoke to me and said, what's the now word? He said, Brandon, I'm giving grace and I'm going to give a, a, a more time. And I, and so, you know, that was back in August of 2015. Whoever this was that sent this to me, you know, I, I won't say their name, but I'm just going to say, thank you. You know who you are. And I, and I thank you for taking the time to do that because this really blessed me a lot today. I don't know who this man is that had this visitation. I'm just, I'm full, full, full disclosure. I don't even know this man. I know that he believes the way I believe. And he's been around after I've um, kind of looked him up and trying to figure out who he was. He uh, He's around the same influence of people that I've been around. So um, I, I believe he's he's legit. I really believe that he really had this visitation encounter from the Lord and um, uh, I, because he saw a lot of the things that I have seen over um, the course of my life of, of visitations that I had from the Lord. A lot of uh, the, the way the angels, the, the way he describes things, it's absolutely amazing. So please listen to the whole thing. It will really bless you. And um, uh, my wife is going to come on right now and uh, and do this. Okay, thank you all. I'll be right back after after she reads this, and I'm gonna pray for y'all. Okay. Hi everybody. Um, I've introduced myself before, but if I haven't ever, if you haven't seen me before, I'm Brandon's wife, and um, it's so good to be on here. And thank you guys. Just wanted to take a quick second to say how much we love and appreciate you all. Um, and now I will just go ahead and read this visit vision from uh, that this person the had. Email. Yeah, from the email. I had a vision prophetic experience as I was eating lunch recently. Suddenly a portal opened in the spirit realm and my angel said to me, you are summoned to come to the courtroom of heaven. You are to record the case being tried now so that God's people will know the lateness of the hour. You must warn them so that the bride may awaken and take heed. The time is short. I was escorted by two angels to a seat on the left side, down front of the Supreme Courtroom. There were many hundreds of angels and saints already seated before the bench. I was surprised how much it looked like our Supreme Courtroom in America, except it was much larger. It looked more like a giant arena with thousands of seats ascending up as far as I could see. There were five big leather lawyer-like chairs with wings on each side in the front row. They reminded me very much of the kind of chairs my father always sat in behind his desk at his law firm years ago. There were gold embossed cards on them that said recorder on all five of these chairs. I must have been the first to arrive and I was ushered into the one closest to the bench. 
I sat down and sunk into this really comfortable chair and was handed a pen and a small scroll. I was curious as I looked at it, for it looked really old-fashioned. The pen was had a feather quill with an old-fashioned nib, like a fountain pen at the bottom, to write with. The pad was a scroll that was made out of parchment. It would open automatically as you wrote upon it when you got to the bottom of the page. It was kind of like an iPad that looked like a small Torah scroll at the same time. The angel showed me how it worked. It was extremely easy to hold and write on. When I would start to write, it would write whatever I thought of in perfect calligraphy script as fast as I thought it. The nib seemed to fly over the parchment with ease in my hand. It would write whatever the angel put in my, into my mind from what I saw and heard to record and then would describe perfectly any other information the Holy Spirit deemed important in an instant as it happened. It was the easiest thing I have ever written. It seemed to do all the work without my thinking or trying. I think this must be heaven's way of court legal stenography. I don't know if that's how you say it, stenography. Most amazing of all, I was writing in Hebrew and I hardly knew know the language at all. But somehow I understood and thought it in fluent Hebrew during the vision. I cannot offer any explanation for this at all. The angel said, you are one of five prophet recorders that have been summoned from the earth to chronicle and witness this trial soon to begin. Just let the pen flow over the parchment and it will be a witness to the proceedings. Then you will sign it when it is finished and it will be added to the eternal ledger of legal proceedings. Soon the other four recorders were seated and shown how to write as I was. I recognized one of them as a current prophet on earth. He was the only other from the western world. I cannot speak of whom it was at this time and the other three of whom were not known to me. We were all different races from different regions of the earth. One was a Chinese woman of great age who just glowed with the wisdom and love of God. We were dressed in black robes with red border sashes on the sides and the sleeves. The other prophet recorder was a lady from Africa who had a headdress that wrapped around her head which flashed rays of light whenever she moved. She spoke and wrote in French, I believe. The fifth was a man from America. I was given a yarmulka, I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry, of golden color. It had had 12 ruby stones around it. God, God called me to wear a yarmulka whenever I minister on earth, so I wasn't surprised that I had the one to wear here. When the angel put it on my head, I could feel the weight of it like it was made out of actual metal gold, even though it felt soft to the touch like silk. Everyone finally assembled and a great and beautiful angel who proceed, proceeded, presided over the courtroom named Justice stood up. She seemed to tower over us and was about 20 feet tall. Then angels appeared with long trumpets on either side of the courtroom and sounded a fanfare that ended with a blast. The angel Justice then shouted with a very loud but soprano voice, All rise, the honorable ancient of days, the judge of all creation, the king of the ages, the most high Lord almighty is present and presiding or proceeding. I don't know. I think it says presiding. We all stood up exactly at the same time in unison. Then the most awesome sound of praise and worship filled the atmosphere as we all began to praise his glorious majesty together. I have never experienced such a sense of awe as the fear of the Lord filled the court. It was only then that I could just make out who was seated behind the holy bar. There were not nine judges, but twelve. God the Father sat in the middle with six of the Supreme Court judges on both sides of him. I somehow knew he was the final deciding vote in, any de in every decision. After our praises finished, the angel justice, who I now saw was a lady and not a male angel, shouted, Be seated! The high court is now in session. She was standing just in front of his throne. She had a golden gavel and struck a giant crystalline base with it. There was a great thunderclap and lightning flashed out from the gavel base and flew across the room in all directions. It was only then that I could see the judges behind the bench. The only person I could not see was the face of the father, but I could see the throne he sat upon in the outline of his face. He seemed to be clothed in a white blinding light as well. He had a black robe on, but had every 
color of the rainbow flashing out of it. If he moved even slightly, lightning bolts would fly all over the room out of his head, his hands, and his feet. The other judges to the father's right hand were Enoch, Father Abraham, Moses the lawgiver, David the king, Elijah the prophet, and Daniel. On the father's left hand were John the Baptist, Peter, James, John, Andrew, and Paul the apostle. I do not know whether these were the permanent judges of the Supreme Court of Heaven or not, but these were the ones seated for this case. They all were dressed in these black iridescent judge robes. There were stunning crowns of glory on each of their heads and they were holding gold scepters in their right hands. The father in the middle on the throne of judgment held the biggest scepter and had many crowns suspended over his head that shot lightnings out of them in every direction. I could not look upon him or his face because it was so bright. It was like looking into the noonday sun. I was given one glimpse of him when he first came into the courtroom. There was a rainbow that would appear that encircled him above and below that I saw a few times during this vision. I could not endure looking at him for more than a split second before I had to avert my eyes for the white blazing brightness was too intense. All the judges behind the great bar were emanating a great light that was also nearly blinding. That is the closest I can describe them now. Then the case was read before all present by Lady Justice the Angel. She spoke, This is the summary of the case brought before the Supreme Court of Heaven today. The timing of the final judgments of the day of the Lord must be decided. The accuser Satan is prosecuting, declaring that the time of Adam's lease is over and he must be allowed to take ownership of the earth for a time and times and half of time as it is written in the Holy Scriptures. Representing the holy defense is the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. At this, Yeshua himself stood up at the defense table as the advocate general of the bride of Messiah on earth. He was representing the holy saints of God still alive in their bodies on earth. When he stood up at the left table, everyone bowed and worshipped except those at the prosecution table to the right. There was a very handsome man who sat just stone-faced with several other princes at the prosecution table. They did not move. The head man sneered when they worshipped Yeshua. Representing the agenda of the fallen Lucifer, now called Satan, is himself the accuser, liar, and deceiver, Ha Satan. At this, the handsome prince with the evil smirk stood up. No one moved. There was silence in the courtroom for about a minute. Then Lady Justice spoke again. You may sit down now. Finally, he did so with another sneering grunt. I marveled that he seemed human and actually very attractive to look at, although there was no heavenly light in him or around him. The prosecution may proceed, Lady Justice proclaimed. At that, this man stood up. He was robed in a black suit that had a long cape of crimson red that followed behind him. He had gold epaulets on his shoulders that were built into his cape. He was very articulate and extremely haughty. I got sick to my stomach as he spoke. He walked back and forth in front of the courtroom in long strides with his nose in the air. It reminded me of a painting of what Napoleon looked like, except this man was much taller than Napoleon. He began his long diabatre of accusation against fallen man. He seemed to know the Bible very well. Starting from Adam and Eve, he began accusing God of failing mankind in every generation. He started with the stipulation, Adam was given exactly 6,000 years to rule the earth. He gave that lease to me and I own it. I have a right to rule over every man, woman, and child who are mine by Adam's free choice. The time is up. I now demand to be given to me the government of mankind through whom you call the son of perdition. I call him my son of man. I have the scriptural right to take control of the earth for seven years. Give it to me now. Then he sat down. Again, for about a minute or so, there was complete silence. Lady Justice then spoke again. The defense may proceed. Yahshua then arose from the defense table. He wore a white robe with blue trim and red sleeves with a bottom border and neck border of red. He wore a small diadem of 
solid diamonds as a crown. Once again, when he stood up, everyone bowed their heads before him in worship, except those at the prosecution table. He said, in summary, as the true son of man, I have taken the death penalty for every generation of fallen man, including those in this harvest generation. I also strip Satan of his authority over the church of the living God. His gates can no longer prevail against her. Through the intercession of my holy bride on earth, the overcoming church of the living God, there has been granted a pause by this court to allow for the fullness of the harvest to come in. During the last hearing of on this matter in 2015, three years ago in earth's time, for I spoke on... So listen earth. to that. Did you hear what? that? What he said? Yes. In 2015. Yeah. So read that again. Um, he said, where was I? There was, right there, was granted, the there has been granted a pause by this court to allow for the fullness of the harvest to come in during the last hearing on this matter in 2015, mm -hmm. three years ago in earth's time. For I spoke on earth as it is written, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then the end shall come. I, by the authority of the prayers and intercession of the bride, documented here in this scroll he handed the scroll to the father and another copy of it to satan's prosecution table i petitioned the court for another measure of time for the end time church to finish and fulfill the promise to my people as it is written that none should perish but all who are truly mine have the opportunity to hear the good news of the gospel and to be saved from perdition as he was speaking Satan, the handsome man lawyer, was busy reading the scroll feverishly to see if there was truly enough intercession to stop his immediate seizing of the earth and for the tribulation to begin. He was consulting his other diabolical lawyers about it. Foul language was coming out of his mouth along with a hissing and accusing his right-hand man, saying, You told me that we had destroyed the prayers of the church. The great awakening had, thwar had been thwarted. And then he was saying bad words. Yahshua continued, As you can see, my faithful bride remnant has kept the faith, enduring the evil, and continue to overcome. The blood of the martyrs has proven their faithfulness. Look at China. Look at the Middle East. Look at Africa. Look at Indonesia. Look at South America. Look at the islands of the sea. Look at my persecuted bride in all nations. Even America has held. Through all of hell has been thrown against her. The facts speak for themselves. I have the authority to request for another extension of time. The defense petitions the court for another extension of time in the grace that I purchased by my blood on the cross. Also, I petition the court to look into the scrolls of the hidden councils written before the foundations of the earth regarding the mysteries of the harvest of the end of days. These Satan has no knowledge of, as they were never shown to him. It is written there, as well as in the hidden revelation of Scripture, that, tribu that the tribulation beginning the kingdom age must begin only after all of my bride that are ordained to eternal life are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This information can also be found in the scroll given by my hands to the court for eternal record. The evidence written in this scroll Fully, fully confirms and documents our holy and righteous claim. Though millions shall come to me and be saved in the tribulation to come, my holy bride must all be prepared now. Then there, was, then there came a time of silence. Nobody moved. The judges on the bench were studying the scroll. Somehow it had multiplied into 13 scrolls. All of the judges, including the father, read through the scroll. I got to get one glance at the writing, it was written in red. It was written in the blood of Yeshua. I was told that by the I was told by the chronicling angel that was helping me to write. Amazingly, as I wrote about this, the ink coming out of my pen became blood red as well for the duration of the description of it. Then it turned back to black ink again. After some deliberation, there was a vote. Every vote every judge voted in favor of the saints to extend another time period of grace. I cannot disclose how long it is at this time. Finally, the father, the great judge of all the earth spoke. He said, on the basis of the evidence presented by the defense, I decree that the 
prosecution has failed to bring a closing to the final days of grace on earth. An extension of time has been granted to the saints of the overcoming bridal remnant church. Nevertheless, the birthing pains and judgments on the earth will not be stopped. Ha, Satan has the authority to rule over the tares of the earth. I want to interject something here. Read that. Nevertheless, read that again. Yeah. I, I want you all to understand what he said, what the father said here. Read yeah. that. Read that here. Nevertheless, the birthing pains and judgments on the earth will not be stopped. Mm -hmm. Ha, Satan has the authority to rule over the tares of the earth, the wicked in darkness, by their willing consent, according to the tenets of free will given to Adam's race at the beginning of creation, both the tares and the wheat have grown up and are now ready to be harvested. Therefore, the birth pangs of judgment shall increase. Increase. Remember? Mm -hmm. I said from Rohashanah to Rohashanah. Yeah. What did the Lord say? And now look at here. Yep. Therefore, the birth pangs of judgment shall, shall increase. Those that will abide with me in the secret place, I will provide for and protect. Those that do not are in more and more peril with each passing day. Though I have granted this, the final day of the Lord has indeed come. And the prosecution is correct. The time of grace upon the earth is nearly over. Warn my children, this is the midnight hour. Watch and pray that you can stand in the evil, evil day and overcome I am answering the prayers of my kingdom coming to earth. It shall come first in the fire of my holy judgments, but it, is all, it shall also come in the great awakening that I have promised of revival and outpouring. The time of my wrath is soon to engulf the earth, but in it I will remember mercy. Many millions of souls shall be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Then... The angel Lady Justice came forward and was blindfolded. She raised a large old-fashioned scale in her hands above her head. Into one of the bowls, a, preceding, a presiding angel poured a black sand-like powder over, from a brass urn. This tipped the scale to all the way at the bottom as far as it could descend. This represented the accumulated sin and rebellion of all of mankind, as well as the failures of the church in this generation. Into the other bowl, a presiding angel dressed in a golden robe pour, poured a white sand-like powder from a porcelain white urn that represented the prayers and intercession and obedience of the overcoming church in generations past, as well as the bridal company of our generation. This is what allows for evil to be restrained. I was really alarmed because it looked so small at first compared to the amount of black powder in the other bowl. But the angel kept pouring, and suddenly the holy justice scale began to balance out. Then it was even. As we all watched, the scale suddenly shifted. The white bowl went down, and the black bowl came up. Then there were mighty shouts of praise and victory in the courtroom. Then the father raised his golden scepter in his left hand and slammed his gavel down, accompanied by thunderclaps and lightning flashing everywhere, with bursts of rainbow colors shooting through the courtroom, and said, The time of grace shall be extended and petitioned by the bride of Messiah for a little longer. Blank more. It doesn't say how much. He, he won't say how much more. Length of time has been granted to finish the final harvest in the age of grace. N um, note, I have condensed what was spoken in the trial into this brief summary. I am forbidden to share any more, though much more was spoken. You can eventually go to the Library of Legal Proceedings in Heaven to access the entire transcript. Of course, you will probably have to wait for this access to when you arrive there unless granted by the Lord through revelation by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then I was told to sign the recording scroll I had written. The four other prophet recorders also signed their scrolls. I noticed that their scrolls were written in different earthly languages. The most visible was Chinese. Then the vision ended and I immediately went to my computer and typed what I saw and heard. Dearly beloved bride of Messiah, we must labor now while it is light. Soon it will be night where we cannot labor in the harvest fields of the earth any longer. People get ready. Jesus is coming. Thank you all for listening. Um, I'm a little camera shy. I'm usually with the kids and everything um, while Brandon's recording. So um, I, I hope that it blessed you and that I did it justice. Um, so now here is back to Brandon. Well, what'd y'all think about that? You know, I, um, 
you know, in my opinion, there were some things that I have to think about, but for the most part, I mean, you know, I, I didn't see, whenever I've been into heaven, I didn't see a lot of black. So, you know, it was on the streets and things like that, uh, uh, on the, on the build, on the, 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 the houses and the buildings had black on some of the trim, but I didn't see black clothes uh, ever. So, you know, I, I know it was a courtroom setting, and so this is what I thought was interesting. You know, um, whenever I told you all that I was taken in the spirit and I saw Satan uh, being an accuser of the brother and he was accusing me, I told you all about this, about opening some door through sin. And he was saying, now, see, now he's opened the door. Now you have to hand him over to me. And um, he was petitioning the father to destroy me and uh, saying that I had opened doors through sin. And the angel came to me and he said, you, you need to take communion right now. And I told you all about that. So I took communion and I, pl I pled the blood over what I had done. And I asked the Father, I, you know, when I cried out for mercy and Jesus stood in the gap for me as my attorney. And he said, the blood, my blood speaks for him. And Satan started shrieking and yelling in the courtrooms. It was, it was very similar to what this man said that he saw. So he's talking about how Satan goes up there and is accuser of the brethren. So here, here. I, he has a lot of the same things that I'm trying to tell you all that I've seen. I've seen this courtroom. I've been in there in the spirit. I've seen the angels warning me that I was being on. I was on trial, and I I saw that the blood of Jesus Christ <clears throat> spoke for me, and he spoke. He speaks for you. He speaks for every single one of us. He's at the Father making intercession for us. And it's, and it's amazing to me that somebody else had more detail than what I saw. I, I, I had a glimpse and I could see what was going on. I could hear the courtroom. I could hear the voices. But this was so detailed of everything that the Lord was speaking uh, grace over us. As usual, he's a merciful, merciful God. <clears throat> and so I, um, this blessed me. That, that somebody else saw something like this. And I was just like, Lord, wow, wow. And I wanted to come on here and share it with you. And so I hope you all, it blessed you as much as it blessed me. So really, bottom line, 2015, they had a trial. This was for what my wife did some research. This was 2018 when he had this visitation. So the Lord keeps granting more time through our prayers you look at back at what I told you all, the Lord told me, I want you to go on YouTube and I want you to teach people their authority and I want you to teach them prayer and I want you to t tell them I'm coming. Interceding for the things that I show you in protection for some of the people, in protection for uh, to, to, to advert some things. Uh, for for certain things that he has go, that he shows me, you know, we can pray and and pray and obey. That's what I try to get across. Pray and obey and believe. And I believe with all my heart, we can change the outcome of a lot of things. We have power and authority, like over the weather, over the things that I'm trying to warn you all about, about uh, catastrophic events, trying to push back war. Remember one of her, my one of my visions I told you all. This is my prayer prayer thing. I pray with this, you know, my, my talit is what I believe it's called. When Jesus said, who will stand in the gap for America? Who will intercede for America? Because I saw the antichrist agenda trying to come full force, uh, and, and push it tried to, it was trying in the spirit to raise war up even faster, trying to do things. And, and even whenever you listen to what he said, what, what the, what the father said out of his mouth, what I, I, I had my wife read it twice. The birthing pains are not going to stop. They're going to increase and increase and increase. It's biblical. He's not going against his word. Okay? But he, just like I told you when I went in before, before him, and, he, and I said, as the days of Noah, remember that visitation I had? There's so many visions and visitations that I've had that line up with a lot of what some of this stuff was, it was said. He said, I'm in control of time. When did I ever design the armor for you to retreat? You have escape mentality. Remember that one? I told you I went to the throne 
and I, and I saw the glory and I saw the fire and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the light. What well, he said, it was brighter than the noonday sun. The light of the Father was so bright, it would like it would burn your eyes out. You couldn't stare at it. Every single thing that he, I mean, he starts going through, but going through there and telling people, um, telling through this 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 visitation what he saw, uh, it it just it just shows you we're not going to retreat and 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 back down in fear. The Lord wants a harvest of souls, and a lot of people don't understand what they think they have. Well, Jesus come back this year. Jesus come back. Well, no, not until we see a harvest of souls. Yes, there will be a harvest of souls after the rapture of the church. But I believe um, during the tribulation, I believe there's be a lot of people born again and, and, and turn from from uh, everything because they because they know they see the Bible coming to pass. People who have even have a, a little bit of inkling of the Bible know what's going on. You can look around, you can feel it. It's tangible in the atmosphere. If you just barely, it's like a pin prick, and you're getting getting wet. So what I'm trying to say is I believe we're going we're about to see through the prayers of the saints, just like we were saying, what the purpose of this channel is, interceding for America, interceding for the 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 uh Europe and for for Asia and everywhere, South America, you know, just interceding for Africa. Um for this last push, doing our job, being that salt, getting this this billion soul harvest. Believe in him for, for the supernatural like we've never seen before in this earth. I believe we're going to see this. And I believe that's why we've not been taken out. I believe with all my heart. I've seen dates. I've seen things. And people go, well, you missed it. No. He delays things on purpose because he's in control. He, he loves us. And he doesn't want that not one should perish. Not one. How? You know what the Bible says? If ye being evil give good gifts to your children, how much more does your heavenly Father give good gifts to those that love him? Think about that. We give good gifts to our kids, and we have evil hearts sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Until we get renewed of the, the Lord, the Bible says, how much more does a Father that loves us want the best for us? He's our God. He loves us. So if he wants to give a good gift to you, he don't want you to burn in hell forever. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is coming. And he's coming back for a spotless bride. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for you and he's coming back for me. And he wants to take us to uh, heaven. And he, and, he, and he loves us so much. But he doesn't want none of your, your relatives going to hell if, if we can help it. Let's do our best to preach the gospel. <clears throat> Telling them that Jesus loves them. I don't know why all this the Holy Ghost always hits me. I start crying. Um, telling them that they're going to burn. Telling them that they have a choice. Choose life. So I just want to say God bless you guys. If you could like my, my pillow, my like pillow, like this video right now, please. My wife died to me that. And then subscribe, our subscribe pillow. Please subscribe to our channel. It really would bless us. And then, please, if you could go even further and click the notification bell, it would be a huge blessing to us. I just want to let you all know, every time you do that, you help the algorithm out with the, uh, YouTube, and you're getting the gospel uh, spread throughout the whole world. We are getting people saved all over the world. Seriously. One soul at a time. Jesus is using this channel. And I just want to say it's because of people like you that you've been a blessing to us to help spread it by by putting it on Facebook, sharing it on Facebook, and 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 telling people about us, and 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 just just uh, being a, a blessing to us. I just want to say thank you. And so, let me pray for you real quick. I know this video is going too long, uh, Father. I just uh, thank you for every single person that is represented here. I ask you, Father, right now to give a special blessing over them. I thank you, Lord, that you give them boldness. I feel, I, I hear in my spirit to call boldness and fire down on all every single one of you. That there would be a, a Holy Ghost boldness on the inside of you, bold as a lion. That you would not be timid and walk away from people when the Lord puts it on your heart to witness in these last days to lay hands on the sick and see him recover, to, to cast out devils, to do whatever he's called you to do, the Great Commission, that you to raise the dead, whatever it may be. 
that you would not shy back, but you would press forward with the Holy Ghost fire and boldness in these last days. I call boldness over you in the name of Jesus. Over your mind, I speak to the spirit of fear, and I command you to release them right now in Jesus' name. I call I call confidence and assurance of knowing who you are in Christ. That greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will come not come nigh you. I cover you with the blood. I thank you, Lord, that there is a there is a fire and electricity going through them right now, delivering them from whatever they have ailment of. I thank you, Lord, that they're healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I thank you, Lord, that the light, the light that pierces all darkness, I thank you, Lord, that is it is shining on them and that the light, just like it was on Moses' face, would shine on them in public and people would say, what is it with you? That every pore of our bodies, every fiber of our face would shine Jesus. That Jesus would shine in us, that Christ in us would shine out of us. And, and the people would see the love and the light of God in our eyes, in our face, in our, in our hands, in our emotions. That Jesus would be um, illuminating out of us on a day-to-day -day basis. That we have a more assured faith. That we know that you are inside of us, God. That we have a confidence in you. That we understand that you said we would hear your voice. And a stranger's voice will not follow. We thank you, Lord, for creative ideas to get souls. I thank you for creative ideas, Father, for soul winning. That we would, we would, it'd be, never be seen before ideas. It doesn't have to be TV or social media. But, Father, it could be a creative idea to get a soul saved. I thank you, Lord, that you help us. You give us wisdom. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth, into all things that we need to know. Show us the things to come and what we can avert through prayer. To stop. To stop the plans of the wicked. That we're not behind trying to put out the fires. We stop the fires before they start. That we're hearing you before the enemy tries to do something. That we're not always trying to pray over a war. We're trying to do this or that. Father, that, that we stop the mess before it even starts. Because we have you on our side, Lord. And you know the future better than we know our past. And I thank you, Lord, that you would give us wisdom and revelation knowledge concerning your future, concerning our future, concerning the world, knowing that we have a covenant and a better covenant through Jesus Christ's blood. And Him, and he was raised from the dead and set at the right hand of the Father. And I thank you, God, that you dwell on the inside of us. We're wall to wall, Holy Ghost. And we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. I just want to say thank you, like I said. Well, put a smile on your face uh, and a song in your heart. Jesus loves you so much, and we love you, and we will see you next time, y'all. Have a wonderful day. Bless you guys. Bye-bye.